humbly prostrate at the feet of your holiness, we come to you representing the feudal lords of France. For generations, our ancestors have held the sovereign rights to their own domains. But now, an edict is before His Majesty King Louis XIII, which if signed will strip us of our revenues and reduce us to the position of lackeys. If His Majesty signs this edict, it will mean civil war, a useless, unnecessary war, which will mean the shedding of the blood of thousands of children of the church. Your Holiness, if we could prevent this civil war by surrendering our private domains, we would surrender them willingly. But no, our revenues, our possessions, are not to go to the crown. We are the victims, the helpless victims of the Minister of State, His Eminence, Armand Cardinal Richelieu. Your Holiness, Cardinal Richelieu is mad with the lust of power and each day he draws more and more into his greedy hands. We are determined to fight, if necessary, to protect our domains. Therefore, it is to you we come to prevent this civil war, to prevent the unnecessary shedding of blood. We beseech your holiness to intercede in the name of our Holy Mother. We have no time to wait for a decision from the Pope. The King has already signed the Monster's Edict. Signed, do you hear that? That means that from this day, henceforth, we are servants. Yes, practically servants of the King. You mean His Red Eminence, Richelieu? Yes. 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 The King listens to everything the churchman says. We have but one hope left. Count Barada, we must turn to you. You and you alone have the confidence of His Majesty. We must act at once. We must strike. We have already struck. What? Uh, my lords, you'll be gratified to learn that I've been in secret conference with Her Majesty Queen Anne and the Queen Mother. And they both realize that this crafty priest has overstepped his bounds. And they're with us, gentlemen, with us to the end. <laughs> the Cardinal has a long arm, Barada. You must be careful. <laughs> I see no humble churchman, such as he would have us believe, but a sly, subtle prelate, playing Louis the King like a fish, pretending to be drawing power into the hands of the state, whilst all the time he draws the power to himself. Yeah. I see a vicious, greedy monster, hiding his true self behind the red robes of his office. And when the King gives the word, I'll tear him down. We'll be with you, yeah. Holland. Oh. Even though we were at his own altar. suggest, Your Majesties, that this is the moment. Are you sure? The King is not so well this morning. But it is only when he's ill that he's at all tractable. Exactly. After his long period of illness, he feels determined to make an effort. But he is still weak, and his vitality is low. <laughs> Good. Where is the order for the Cardinal's dismissal? I have it here. We shall never have a better chance, but with Richelieu away. Oh. Shall Gaston come? No, no, don't bring me into it, yet. As the king's brother, I think it would be inadvisable for his highness to be associated with this. Good, good. Keep me out of it, as yet. Mark you, I say, as yet. For the dismissal of a man like our beloved cardinal, I took pleasure in preparing it myself. Her Majesty, the Queen. We all wish you success. You understand? Until I come back through this door, you are to admit no one. I understand, Your Majesty. But in case something should cause you to forget, such as gold, give me the key. There are two doors to His Majesty's apartment. Give me the other key. I shall lock both doors on the inside. You forget nothing. This time I have no intention of being interrupted until our purpose has been achieved. His 
Highness is very nervous. Hey, no, I'm not nervous, gentlemen, but after all, Richelieu isn't human. Human or inhuman, man or devil, he's not here. And Barada says the deed's as good as done. No, it's not done yet. They might fail. Not with Baradai at their elbow. Yes. Richelieu. His red eminence is at Lyon, three days away. Has he wings? Can he fly? Look! Look! What? What is it? Mother of heaven! What? What is it? He isn't human, Your Highness. He's here, yes, but what can he do? They're locked in, I tell you. Didn't we see the key turn? Shh. Here he comes. Our beloved Cardinal knows at last his day is over. Farewell, Holy Father. Alas, a long farewell. <laughs> I must say you've selected a strange moment to press this matter. My doctors have ordered me absolute quiet. A fact which my wife seems to entirely disregard. You have persistently refused to see me. When Richelieu is by your side, you will listen to no one, not even your mother. You know you hate me, really? I hate Richelieu, uh, that impudent churchman who works daily to make a king's crown out of his cardinal's hat. No, 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 mother, don't exaggerate. You seem incapable of ruling without his eminence. Don't talk to me like you that. You don't seem to realize we are facing a civil war. A civil war? Are you mad? Do you think people like Lorraine and Normandy are going to forfeit the rights they've held for hundreds of years? They'll do what I say. And if not... We'll crush them. Exactly. Civil war. And already England, Austria and Spain are roused by the threat of this new army Richelieu was mobilizing. They consider it a menace. France needs it. That's enough. I'll not sign any order for Richelieu's dismissal. The subject is closed. Berda, are you in this too? Sire, I question whether it is wise to dismiss Cardinal Richelieu. Yeah. After all, he's the most popular man in France. Uh, you forget yourself. The king is the most popular man in France. That's true, isn't it? Well, speak. If you say so, sire, of mm. course. Then why do the cardinal's morning receptions attract all the nobility of the court? Why is his palace thronged and yours practically deserted? Palaces, churchmen? Palaces should only belong to royalty. Ah, you forget. He's now as wealthy as you. His new palace is far more regal than yours. Is this true, Barada? Or must I speak, sire? I order you to. This palace, have you seen it? Well, sire, it is spacious. About twice the size of your palace here. The gold plate, the finest of its kind. Porcelain, brought overland from the east. Magnificent indeed. There's nothing like it in all Europe. Of course, some people might say it is bad taste to outshine the first gentleman of France. But doubtless Cardinal Richelieu has reasons for wishing to make such a display. Uh -huh. And who am I to criticize him? I listen to no such tales. You lords are jealous of his power. Sire, you know you have my allegiance. If it seems good to you to take my poor lands for the benefit of France, I surrender willingly. I do not question your majesty's right. All I do ask is why should some lands be taken and others left? What do you mean? The edict applies to all the feudal lords. Sire, I have evidence to the contrary. Evidence? What evidence? In the last few months, Richelieu has accepted 10 million francs from the Duke of Normandy on the understanding that the Normandy estates will not be forfeited. Why should the Cardinal take my lands when he accepts 10 million francs not to take the lands of the Duke of Normandy? Yes, but, but this is bribery. It would appear so, sire. Normandy's army is as great as yours. It seems a pity that it was not taken along with the rest. But perhaps the Cardinal had reason. 10 million francs? And what has become of that money? Perhaps the Cardinal can explain that away. Perhaps that explains the erection of this new palace of his. Give me that paper. And stop talking, all of you. 
I must study this carefully. He goes too far, much too far, this devilish priest. You have only to sign here. I have a feeling that I am the subject of this absorbing debate. Secret entrances? Eavesdropping? This is intolerable. I hurried to you on my arrival, knowing your majesty was sick. Yes, sick of your presumption and insolence. I am reassured. I feared it might be worse. Madame is well? As well as your presence allows. I am glad to know that you are in such good health. You've written with unaccustomed haste, my lord cardinal. Your holy office makes great demands on your powers. Your powers make great demands upon my holy office. No, 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 have done with this. I've heard serious charges against you, cardinal. A minister who doesn't make enemies is failing in his duty to his king. I understand you accepted 10 million francs from the Duke of Normandy. Is that true? Yes. Was it a bribe? Yes, your majesty. I fear it was a bribe. The Duke of Normandy offered me 10 million francs to refrain from taking over his domain. I had already realized that owing to the strength of his army, we were powerless to take his lands, so uh, I accepted his money. And where is the Duke of Normandy's 10 million francs? Your Majesty's minister is using it to build up Your Majesty's army until it is strong enough uh, to take the uh, Duke of Normandy's uh, domain. But is this strictly honest? My one ambition is to make France a great power. These petty kingdoms must be held under one hand. Not a hand with fingers forever outstretched, but one that can close and become a mailed fist capable of striking back. With France united, Your Majesty will go down in history as Louis of glorious memory. But 10 million francs for the army? I don't believe it. It is almost unbelievable, but armies cost money. And so does your great palace. Yes, this palace of yours. Why do you call it a palace? Because it is a palace, Your Majesty. Well, I'm not sure that I approve of this display. Gold plate, I hear, and porcelain from the uh, east. Uh, treasures from the remotest worlds brought to France for the pleasure and profit of France. Of France? Of Richelieu, I think. Your Majesty will doubtless approve the gardens, the terraces. The avenues of Rome and marble. And glittering fountains. Your appreciation fills me with pleasure. When my plans are completed, I believe my palace will be finer than any Your Majesty possesses. But Since Your Majesty has showered honors upon me, it has been my desire to make some concrete return to my benefactor. And so, I have built a palace that shall outshine that of any monarch in Europe. And I beg that you will accept it. With its treasures from the uh, east, its marbles, its terraces. Here, Your Majesty, is the deed of gift as a token of love and loyalty uh, from your humble self. But I'm on. But this is magnanimous. Your Majesty will permit me to withdraw. This, I am sure, is my formal dismissal from your service. When my work is done, I beg that you will sign it. That I may retire to some simple home where I can walk in my garden and commune with my God. Until then, I take the liberty of withholding it from your hand. Her Majesty the Queen. Gentlemen, I am overwhelmed, but uh, uh, grateful. Good day.
the Huguenot nobles. Fifteen death warrants awaiting your signature. Have they had fair and proper warning? Yes. First all means to conciliate, and then all means to crush. Here are the names of the six men to be arrested on suspicion. Enemies of the state. What next? King Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden is still waiting. I hope you offered him our choicest wines. Yes. We'll see him. Let His Majesty the King of Sweden be shown in. Queer word, Joseph. When kings go into the business of selling human lives, and we can use him. Your Majesty. You're wrong, Cardinal, trying to make me drunk. Ah. Perhaps that's why kings are so much cleverer than cardinals. Or won't you sit down? <laughs> You're trying to pull your country out of the fire in your way. I'm pulling mine out by setting up a market in men. I need money. I'm doing pretty well. I know. Austria's offered you ten tubs of gold. You're an astute man, Gustavus Adolphus. You know I must have your troops, so you mean to make me pay for them. Very well, I will. My price is 15 tubs of gold, and that should show you a handsome profit. That's the way. That's the way to treat me. I came here prepared for shilly-shallying. Trickery, fraud, all the things they say about you. Instead, you come out with a real offer. I like you. I admire your candor. When do I get the tubs of gold? Cross the border with 30,000 troops. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 25,000. Oh. Have I made a mistake? My offer was for 30,000. <laughs> well, you're shrewd. But you're an honest trader as traders go. <laughs> I'll make it 30,000. Huh. And you're sending me five tubs in advance. Not a single tub, until you're in position. Well, I don't blame you. Agreed. One point. Against the Austrians, I advise you to set up your artillery at 1,500 feet. Not 2,000. That was why you had to fall back when you fought against us. Oh, you've been a cardinal so long, one forgets you've won battles in your time. <laughs> Well, perhaps you'll end up in the church. <laughs> the pattern is perfect. Eh, hey, Mr. Green? <laughs> I see no loophole anywhere. We have Austria by the ears, <laughs> England by the tail, and Spain. Pity we can't use Miss Degree. She has such beautiful claws. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Who put this ribbon on you? Oh, it must have been Lenore. Lenore. Now, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Joseph, we must turn our attention to that child. I suppose you'll present her at court. No, no. The court is no fit place for a young girl. We'll look after her here. But we must find something to interest, to divert her. Yes. I'm afraid I'm not very entertaining with young girls. Uh, no. But now that she's left the convent, and she's here, she's my responsibility. And we must give her something to amuse her. Uh, something to play with, you mean? Uh, well, yes. She's no longer a child, you know. No. Uh, too old for dolls, of course. What about a horse? A horse of her own? Yes, a horse. Uh, don't get her a charger, Joseph. 
Just a nice, quiet man that she can ride with safety. Children who have nothing to occupy them may get into mischief. Mischief? No, no. Not Lenore. Now, won't you tell me your name? Why not? Not yet. When? Perhaps tomorrow. I don't know. You'll be here at the same time tomorrow? I can't promise. I have to ask my guardian so that you can come and see me at the... so that you can come and see me openly. As, as soon as I know, I'll write to you. And I'll leave the note right here. And now, you're not to look which way I'm going. You promise? I promise. Now, no looking. <laughs> well, my child, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Uh, mine is a life of contradictions. I pray for peace and salvation and send men to their death. I flatter kings, amass worldly wealth, and tax the poor. And pray God to be merciful. And they make men hate men. My father loved you. Hmm. And you were smiling when I came in just now. What were you reading? When I was young, I wrote down words of guidance for my own conduct. Oh. Uh, let me see. I don't recommend them to you or to anyone. But when I first came to court, I wrote this. Hmm. When I was 21. Burn all incriminating letters. Do not appear distracted when others are speaking. Withdraw adroitly without lying when the truth is dangerous. The king loves to be praised. Remember, to lose the favor of the king is to lose all. <laughs> if you have purpose, pursue it. If you believe deeply, act boldly. Ah, well. 21. If you believe deeply, Act boldly. What would you write <clears throat> for yourself? Questions, perhaps. Without answers. What questions? Is it possible to fall in love with anybody after having seen them once? <laughs> well, uh, you shall tell me that. <laughs> Is it? Yes. Whom have you seen? You've only been out of the convent three weeks. When I was at the convent, the girls used to throw silly notes over the wall to young men. I did it too. A young officer. Passed again. He was very handsome. I threw another note. And then one day he threw back an answer. After that, we used to throw a lot of notes. But that was at the convent. Oh, but after all, the convent is very near here and... I went back to see if there were any more notes. Do you mean to say that you've left the palace grounds alone? Oh, I know it was wrong, but it was only to the convent, and... and today... Well? I met him. How often have you met him? Only once, today. And you think you love him? Yes. His name? André de Pons.
Does he know that Cardinal Richelieu is your guardian? No. No, he doesn't know about you. He doesn't even know my name. Are you quite sure of that? Quite. Will you see him? Yes. Thank you. His Majesty is here. His Majesty? With half the court, I should think. What does he want? He says he's come to see his palace. Uh, Joseph, I'm afraid I gave it to him. It's a magnificent gift. It's all that you claim for it. And when does His Majesty take possession? The deed says, when it is finished, Your Majesty. Uh, so great an undertaking may take many years. Uh, perhaps the span of my poor life. Stay, stay a moment. Charming, charming, the picture of youth. Who is she? Uh, she's the daughter of an old friend who was killed in the service of France. I made myself responsible. Present her. His Majesty wishes me to present you. This is Mademoiselle Lenard de Brizac. You're lovely. We must see you at court. Would you like that? I'm permitted, Your Majesty. I give you permission. You bring her as she lives. When? Whenever Your Majesty commands. Bring her tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. It would be a great pity if she were to be sent away to some far-off place just when Your Majesty had invited her to court. Eh? The Cardinal usually has his own way about such matters. Oh, that won't do. Where has she been? Oh, at a convent. Uh, she's still a child, you know. I want you to see the Roman marble. You forget how young people grow up. You can't possibly keep her cooped up in this palace of yours. I think the uh, coop is big enough. <laughs> now, I've taken a great interest in her. She must come to court. We must find a husband for her. Your Majesty's interest touches me deeply. She's beautiful. She should have a title, a good title, position. Now, in my own mind, I've decided the right man would be uh, Count St. Mars. Have you anything against my choice? Is Your Majesty asking me to marry the Count? <laughs> and don't be obstinate. He has a good title, wealth, position. No, in this our mind is made up. St. Mars. He's the fortunate man. Well? Does Your Majesty deem it necessary to consult St. Mars? St. Mars will do as he's told. Is it possible that there are other reasons for your interest? Are you daring to suggest? Sir, I may accustom myself to the caprices of monarchs. But I will not pander to their vices. You forget that I'm still your king. And I am your cardinal, responsible for your immortal soul. When my time comes, I'll answer for that. How will you answer? A fine, humble churchman. You, with your wealth, your display, your arrogance. Is this in accordance with the principles of your church? These things are for my conscience to determine. But neither my king nor my country may demand the humiliation of this child. You accuse me of intentions? Once for all, will you obey your king? No. Very well. We'll see how far the power of the Cardinal will carry without the support of his king. See, Joseph, on what little things the fate of nations depends. A moment ago, I said there was no loophole. And now the history of France may be changed by a pretty face in a garden. But your whole life's work shall not be destroyed. 
The king dare not quarrel with you. An angry king is a dangerous adversary. Your Eminence, the six men you wanted to question are arrested. They are here. Bring in Count André de Pons. André de Pons, the king, little and all. How high must we build our convent walls? Your guards arrested me. Not without loss, I can tell you. You are arrested as an enemy to France and an enemy to your king. I am an enemy neither to my king nor my country. But if you think I will purchase my freedom by allegiance to you, you're mistaken. So you join the Dukes of Normandy and Lorraine to defy me? Have we not the right to fight for our lands we've held for centuries? Who gave your ancestors those lands? The Crown. What a Crown can give, a Crown can take away. Ah, uh, but it is not the Crown who takes them away, but my Lord Cardinal. Every day you gather more power to yourself. Soon you will have the whole of France in the palm of your hand for your own selfish ends. You're an officer? Yes. You've seen active service? Yes. Is your regiment going to battle a mere rabble without authority or guidance? My regiment is one of the best disciplined. You exact obedience from your subordinates. What sort of an officer should I be if I didn't? And what if they disobeyed you? I should get rid of them. And that, my friend, is my method. Why do you quarrel with it? I was referring to a regiment. And I was referring to the enemies of France. Oh. Sit down. Forget your hatred of me for the moment. And let me ask you, why do I take your lands and those of the great feudal lords? Why? Because to be strong, France must be united. We've done well enough for the past few hundred years. What has stood for a century may be destroyed in a night. England, Austria and Spain are army against us. Have you any pride in your country? Don't you want to see France in the ascendant? Powerful, glorious, supreme. Or do you want to see your country ravaged by foreign invaders? From His Majesty. Unity or defeat? Think it over. They say you're a devil, that you can twist men around your little finger. It's true. I'm ready to serve you. You married. What? And you married. No. That's fortunate. You was married once. Marry? A patriotism demands sacrifices. It's necessary for my purpose that you should marry at once. You ask me what I will do for my country and then set me the one task that is impossible. Impossible? You haven't even seen the lady I have chosen. Nor will I. Ah, I see. You have a lady already. Very charming, no doubt, but uh, you must get rid of her. No. You mean to say that you're going to allow some worthless little creature to jeopardize your whole career? You can do what you like. Commit me to the Bastille as you're about to do, but I won't stoop to this. You're a very violent young man. Uh, tell me, this uh, girl that you have in mind, uh, have you known her long? No. Met her often? Once. Her name? I don't know. <laughs> Here is a man giving up his whole career for a girl whose name he doesn't even know. My lord, I'm willing to serve you, but I can't do this. I give you one minute to change your mind. No. Once this order is signed, I shall not recall it. Well? I've made my decision. Father. Helena. Father, I sent a note for Andre. You mustn't disturb me. I have painful business with this young man. Andre. 
Andre. You found out who I am. You came yourself without waiting. Oh, how courageous of you. He's a very obstinate man. Oh, but, Father, you won't send him away. Send him away? I've been begging him to marry you for the last 15 minutes, and he refuses. Andre. <sighs> Lenore. <laughs> in my chapel in one hour. in thy name, that she who is to wear it, keeping true faith to her husband, may abide in thy peace and obedience to thy will, and ever live in mutual love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With this ring I be wed, this gold and this silver, I thee give, and with all my worldly goods I thee endow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Mademoiselle Lenore is honored by His Majesty's appointment as Lady-in-Waiting to the Queen. <laughs> but she humbly suggests that the matter may be delayed until returned from her honeymoon with her husband, Andre de Pance. He struck me, Barada! What's this? If Your Majesty desires someone to love, love me, Richelieu. I'd have that man's head, Barada. If I could rule the country without him. Well, I belong to the old regime, which they tell me is passing. But it shall not pass in my time. If the representatives of England, Spain and Austria will guarantee to protect the sovereign rights to our private domains, then we, on our side, Pledge ourselves to support them, even with our armies, if need be. Yes, but speaking for England, and I think Spain and Austria, we require that Gaston be placed on the throne instead of Louis. So that France will cease to be a menace to the powers of Europe. Agreed. Then, gentlemen, to sum up, England will attack on the west at La Rochelle. We have the King of England's assurance. Have we not, my Lord Buckingham? Yes, yes, it is arranged. Austria will advance on the east. Yes. But the Swedish mercenaries fought by Richelieu must be disbanded. They have us outnumbered. Gentlemen, Richelieu is already in disfavor with the king. I will see that the mercenary troops of Gustavus will not be allowed to fight. Spain will advance through Corby and surround Paris. Agreed. But Spain relies upon you to hold back Richelieu's new army, to keep it within the gates of Paris. Spain requires that you leave Corby undefended. It shall be done. Le Moyne's army will not be allowed to leave Paris. Public opinion will be stirred to prevent it. Gentlemen, our day is at hand. Austria. Down with Richelieu! Yeah! 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 
We demand that our army be kept in Paris. Defend your wives and children. He's not a favor with the king. Why should we listen to him? Stand with him. He robbed us of every penny to pay taxes, to build an army for the defense of Paris. A robber, a tax thief. Now that we are threatened, what does he do? The army is ordered to leave Paris. Down with the issue. Yeah. His Majesty, the King. Baradon, what do you think? The mob set upon my coach. They're clamoring for something. The pigs, what is it they want? Protection, sire. You know what will happen if the army leaves Paris. The people will revolt. Well, why doesn't Richelieu do something? After all, he's still Minister of War. Well, all he can do is to count his beads and pray. Uh, not that I hold that against him, sire, but this is the time for action. What are you doing here? Why aren't you with your new master, the Cardinal? I'm a soldier, sire. You disobeyed me. You married without the royal consent. I still serve France and my king. You are no longer in the service of the king. You're under arrest. That is unjust, your majesty. You are banished from France. Am I to be defied by everyone? Very well. I'll protect my people. Let the army remain in Paris. Defend Paris to the end. Give the order. Yes, sir. I'll give the order. And if the cardinal raises objections? Objections? Let him try. He's got me in hot water everywhere. It is said you allow him too much power. The only sensible thing he ever did was to buy the King of Sweden's mercenary troops to fight for us. Sire, have you thought of the effect of that upon the Pope? Eh? The Pope? I understand that His Holiness is sending you a manifesto protesting against Protestant troops being hired by a Catholic country to fight Catholics. He regards it as sacrilege. Oh, so it is, so it is. The Pope. Of course, I don't think anything so severe as a threat of excommunication might be put into effect, but... Uh, the Pope against me too? Protestants fighting Catholics? Why didn't Richelieu think of this? He knew Gustavus Adolphus was a Protestant. He'll have me excommunicated before he's through. Send word to Adolphus. His troops are to be disbanded. I'll have no quarrel with the Pope. Well, Mr. Gray, no more pretty ribbons now that Lenore has gone away. The Scottish rebellion against England has broken out. Ah, ah, good. It costs money, but it'll keep England busy. Any news from Gustavus Adolphus? Only a brief note to say that one of the tubs of gold was short weight. <laughs> I take no notice. He always tells me what an honest man he is, so I never believe him. Scotland is asking for more gold. Send them two tubs. They're useful allies. Uh, Joseph, uh, don't send short weight to Scotland. They're sure to notice it. We never send short weight, but the transportation of gold is always difficult. Let me see that protest once more from His Holiness. It's very disturbing. Yeah. To everyone but Misty Gray and myself. I'll have no interference, even from the Pope. But he must be conciliated. Write him a humble letter. I say that I hired Protestant troops because my conscience rebelled 
at the thought of Catholics uh, fighting Catholics. I will sign it. So you see, Joseph, we have England and Austria held back. And Lemoyne has promised us victory over Spain. Marshal Lemoyne! I've been stopped! Order not to leave Paris! By whose orders? The King's! Without consulting me. He thinks Paris is France. He's frightened of the people. If I move out with the troops, he's afraid it means revolution. And if you stay, it means defeat. If the Spanish army reaches Corby ahead of you, they'll be at the gates of Paris in a week. But if you push on... Cardinal, once I trap them in the hills around Corby, I have them. On my word as a soldier. It shall be done. Master the men and make for Corby. For the King's order. I am Minister of War. Officially, I have not been consulted. I give you the order to march. I'm a soldier, but I'm also a man. I want to keep my head on my shoulders. And I mean to keep my hand on their throat. I cannot disobey an order from the King. See that all that. This order forbids you to lead the army out of Paris. That's clear enough. If the army is delivered to you outside of Paris, will you lead it then? But how will you get them out of Paris? The army will meet you outside the walls of Paris by midnight at the East Gate. In the name of France! Joseph, my horse! The church has become the church militant. He said every spy, every paid man to work. In two hours, we must change the temper of the people of Paris. I spend the night at Ruel. At the chateau? Yes. <laughs> out of Paris and out of His Majesty's reach. Here's your supper, Mr. Gray. The king's anger will be uncontrollable. Joseph, I have one consolation. The king can separate me from only one head. Listen, citizens, you want the Spaniards to seize Paris? Oh! You can fight the invader on their own ground. Yeah! Have faith in Richelieu. Don't listen to the idle words of his enemies. If Paris is to be attacked, we must strike first! Yeah. Richelieu is the friend of the people. Don't pay attention to the lies hurled at him by the nobles of the court. They are jealous of his authority. Believe me, my friends, Richelieu knows what he's doing. Cheer him, I say. Cheer Richelieu! Yeah. and a swift victory. person, that would be regarded as treason. Treason? What else is it but treason? Dismiss him, sire. I will! No, no. 
Always when he disobeys me, I have a fatal feeling he may be right. Where is His Highness Prince Gaston? With the Queen Mother, my lord. Now, now surely even Louis won't stand this last insult. This time Richelieu has gone too far. That is done. Well? Well? The king will do nothing. Ah! There's a king for you! His own orders defied, a slap in the face and he does nothing. I'd have Richelieu's head. My son, you must calm yourself. Yeah, but we fail and we fail. I shall never become king. Gaston, now. You know you were always my favorite. It will all be in good time. Yeah, but I shall become king one day, shan't I? You promised me. I shall. Soon. Very soon. And if Louis allows this man to override every decision, it can't be too soon. You! And do something, man, do something! This monster will crush us! Will no one rid me of this priest? Kill him! Haven't we men enough? Kill, kill! I'll kill him myself! <coughs> <coughs> Poor Gaston is mad with rage. Baradar will keep you informed. I leave with Anne. I shall take the treaty tonight. I regret you should have so tiresome a journey. It is the only safe way. No one dares suspect the Queen. Your Majesty. But Mademoiselle. Oh, please, I must see the king. I, I, Mademoiselle. Count Baradar. Mademoiselle. Count Baradar. I want an audience with the king. I beg you to help me. I've come to intercede for my husband. He's been arrested. Yes, yes, my child. Does the cardinal know you're here? The cardinal had left before I heard the terrible news. He won't return tonight. No? No, he stops the night at the Chateau Ruel. The Chateau Ruel? I implore you to help me. Please, I. Andre! Andre! Come, my child. You can do nothing here. You must go home. Leave everything to me. I'll intercede with His Majesty. Oh, thank you. Farada, this is an outrage. It is. I saw you with Lenore. Why is she at the palace? She had a message from the Cardinal. He will defend me. The Cardinal? Don't rely on him. Why not? Is it possible you can be so blind? Blind? Don't you see you've been fooled first and last for the Cardinal? What do you mean? Well, didn't it strike you as curious that he married you in such great haste? It was to save Lenore from the King. From the king or for the king? What? The lady found favor in the eyes of royalty. For appearances, a husband had to be found quickly. The cardinal found you willing, ready to hand. It can't be. No, no man could be such a fiend. Nothing is sacred to our eminent churchman. But Lenore... She's already installed at the palace, but she doesn't know as yet. But uh, you must help me. Well, for the moment, I can protect her. But when the cardinal returns, she will be presented to his majesty as a peace offering. He stays tonight at the Chateau Ruel. It's quiet there. He'll have few guards. You, Andre, can effect an entry. He'll suspect nothing from you. You... You mean... Yes.
You've nothing to fear. With Richard, you're gone. I'll be Minister of State and you'll have my protection. While you've been away, things have moved quickly. In less than an hour, the Queen Mother and Queen Anne will be on their way to Spain. They're supposed to be on a visit to Queen Anne's brother, the King. But in reality, they carry a private treaty between ourselves and Spain, signed by the feudal lords, by me and by Gaston himself. Andre, everyone is with us. But while Richard lives, we can be sure of nothing. Get me out of here. I'll do it. Let him pass, Captain. I take full responsibility. My mind is on his way. And you came here alone? Most dangerous. My dear Joseph, the danger for me tonight is inside of Paris, not outside. What's that? Nice Father! Oh, no, my child, what is it? Andre's been arrested by the King's order. When? Just after you left. They've taken him away and they won't even let me see him. Oh, my child. <laughs> oh, Come. You must have courage. Remember. You are the daughter of a soldier. I'm trying to be brave. But when I think that perhaps I shall never see Andre again. Yes, yes, you will. You say he's banished. Banishment isn't death. He is a prisoner. He's lost to me. And I love him so. Louis strikes at me through you. All Paris is saying that you defied the king. I never defied the king. Except for the good of the kingdom. And I'm terribly afraid for you. Is it necessary for you to act so rashly? Rashly? My child, I never act without mature consideration. But when once I've made up my mind, I mow down everything that stands in my way. Andre shall be free. But if the king still refuses to listen? There is one above who sways the mystery of the world. He will listen, if we pray. Give him no time. Strike on sight. If you wait, he'll outwit you. We'll watch for your signal. Reconnoiter, see what guards they have and where they're placed. Why not break in now, all of us, and make sure of it? Let Andre do the deed. If heads are to fall in consequence, let us keep ours. Andre, my son, I thought you were under arrest. You meant me to be under arrest, but I'm free, and I've come here to kill you. What madness is this? A fine fool you made of me, my lord. A mock marriage. How sweet and holy your eminence looked, how noble. And all the while you were planning to use it to regain the king's favor. What are you saying? Who has been pouring this poison into your ears? They were right. They told me not to wait, but to strike at once. They? Ah, they've made you that tool. Barada again. Barada's my friend. Lenore is at the palace where you sent her. Lenore! Lenore is here. Let me pass that I may call her. A trick, she's not here. You want to call your guards. And go yourself. Turn the latch of that door and call Lenore. I'm a fool. You'll trick me, I know it. But you tempt me with a name. You know that, Judas. You know that. Lenore! A trick, I knew it, you fiend. Did someone call? Whose voice was that? Andre! 
Oh, they're breaking in. I didn't give them the signal. Joseph, take Lenore. Let me stay. No, keep Lenore out of sight. Come, dear. Quick. Andre! You think you can fight a dozen armed men? Oh. Come with me and do as I say. to show a crime. Where was his guard tonight, I wonder? Gentlemen, we can put our plan into action at once. spoke of. What plan? To depose Louis and place Gaston on the throne. <laughs> the Queen Mother and the Queen are on the way to the Spanish border. To visit her brother. Ostensibly, but in reality with a treaty, a private treaty. A signed treaty? Yes, by Barra de Gaston and the rest. Ah! The fools! They put their names on paper. Their signatures. They've gone. Joseph, my carriage and fresh horses. Send Gallop as ahead on the route to the Spanish border. To warn my men at every village, every tavern, to be on the lookout for a royal carriage bearing the Queen and the Queen Mother. At last, uh, their signatures. Andre, you've years for that, and I've only a few hours. <laughs> get in, get in. What is it? His Highness Prince Gaston and Count Baradar, sir. They have news of great importance. Oh, yes, Her Majesty, we thank you. Now let them come in. Sire, Cardinal Richelieu. Richelieu, I wish the man were in his grave. Your wish is almost accomplished, sire. Cardinal Richelieu is dead. Kill, sire. You mean... Assassinated? Yes, sire. Terrible though the crime was, it was a reaction to a monstrous proposal. What's that? Sire, we have uncovered a plot whereby Richelieu intended to have your majesty's life. Oh, no, no. Not Richelieu. He always played for power, but not my life. Dead. But, sire, we can bring you proof. Richelieu dead. I must act myself. No time must be lost, sire. Civil war may break out. You must have protection. Recall Lemoyne and the army. Revoke the edict against the feudal lords. You need their friendship and support. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, summon the council at once. Uh, we must meet early tomorrow. 
instant measures must be taken. Barada, in this hour I turn to you for loyalty and advice. Your Majesty. Continue until daybreak. Bad luck. Come on. We shall have to spend the night in this wretched place. The Queen's coach has been stopped. Their Majesties are staying the night at the inn. Ah, well done. Andre, bring them in. But keep out of sight near the inn. I might need you. Notice a rider who came up on the road and then passed on. Only some lackey asking the way. Let me pass. Impossible. Let me pass, I say. Then shortly afterwards, there was that delay. Nothing mysterious in this delay. He told us the roads are unsafe after the rain. Come in. Your Majesties, I, there is Cardinal Richelieu. Richelieu? Yes, he requests an audience with you. An audience? Here yes. that my regiment of guards as well, Doctor. Feed them well. Your Majesties, I not waste words. You know why I'm here. My Lord Cardinal, how What dare. do you mean by breaking in upon us? You're carrying a secret treaty to the King of Spain. I want it. Your mind sees intrigue in every corner. I have no treaty. Why fence with me? Where is it? We have no treaty. No? Well, I have a warrant for your arrest on a charge of high treason. Signed by the King. Unless you deliver that treaty into my hands, I shall enforce it. Give it to me! I will not! Ah. Then you have it. If your names are not signed to it, why not give it up and save yourselves? Because I will not betray those whose names are signed. They are already betrayed. You may as well know that your plot is blown sky high. Barada is taken prisoner. The Dukes of Normandy, Lorraine and the others are in full flight. And Prince Gaston, your favorite, will have to face his brother on a charge of regicide. There is nothing of that in the treaty. You have the means of proving that. Majesties, my guards will escort you unofficially to Spain. We have our carriage. We shall return to Paris. I would spare the king the surprise of your sudden return. 
His heart is weak. And the surprise of my return will, I believe, be as much as he can bear. You'll proceed to Spain under escort at once. Stop! If the plot was known, as you say, then why did you need the treaty at all? I was afraid you were going to ask me that before I got it. I fear I haven't told you the truth. Then you lied to me, you, a cardinal. You see, tonight I am the king's minister and not the cardinal. Good night, Your Majesties, and a pleasant journey to Spain. Andre! It's only a scratch, Father. Good. Did you? Come, we have a long ride ahead of us. And bad news travels fast. We must reach Paris before they learn of my resurrection from the dead. <clears throat> tell us great changes this month, eh? No need for the stars to tell us that, Your Highness. <laughs> Such actions are reported and made the most of. His Majesty, the King! Overshadowing all events of the day is the news of Cardinal Armand de Plessis, Duke de Richelieu. With his death, many changes will come into effect at once. Already we have decided to revoke the edict. And rely for loyalty and service upon the feudal lords. We on our side express our gratitude to your majesty and assure you of our undying loyalty. It also seems good to us that the army of Marshal Le Moyne will be ordered to return to Paris at once. We ourselves intend to rely for guidance and advice upon our good friend, Count Barada. Your Majesty. And upon the services of our dear brother, Gaston. You may depend on me, so long as you reign. We rely upon you, my lords, for advice in your various offices. If we seem to pass over the death of the Cardinal lightly, it is that we have evidence that he was planning something of such a treasonable nature that were he alive today to answer for it, his life would be forfeit. His evidence, the Cardinal, Duke de Richelieu. Cardinal Richelieu. How comes this report of your death? Sire, the attempt was made. It was well planned and well conceived. But Providence ordained that I should be spared to be of service to you once more. You deny this plot against my life, against the throne? Not only do I not deny it, but I am here to inform you of the details. His Majesty is already informed of the details, my Lord Cardinal. His Majesty is too wise to take the word of an assassin and a traitor. You dare accuse my brother and my friend? Where is your proof? Where is theirs? His whole life is all the proof you need, sire. Cardinal, we have suffered too much from your arrogance and your greed for power. I tolerate it no longer. I believe implicitly in the loyalty and devotion of my friends. I order the arrest of the Cardinal Duke de Richelieu. Sire, I have here... Gentlemen, you hear the order? Arrest him! Back! Stripped of all rank and authority, I carry still a mightier power. The holy office of priest given me by God's anointed on earth, His Holiness of Rome. I face you now as a priest of God, around whom I draw a circle of sanctuary of our solemn church. 
Step foot upon that sacred ground, and on your head, even though it were a crown, I call down the curse of Rome. You believe me guilty. If I have conspired, as they say, against your life, what punishment would you declare fit for the instigator of such a crime? A sentence of death. By your leave to speak, sir. Alan. My lords, nobles of France, from this day and forevermore, France is united into one great kingdom. All power is vested in one central authority, in one absolute ruler, His Catholic Majesty, King Louis XIII. And I am his shadow. First come. First, to light the way for you, sir. For thee and for France, make me merciful and strong, kind and just. In thy blessed name I ask it, for the glory of God and the glory of my country. Amen. 